the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I- Tonight, I'm going to be discussing the all-powerful NCAA transfer portal and how it affects high school athletes. Do you have a high school athlete who you think may be affected by the NCAA transfer portal? Stay tuned as I go into great detail as to what the situation really entails. Many people contact me through Twitter, email, Yahoo Mail, Facebook, Instagram, all of the above, even the all-powerful TikTok. And all they want to talk to me about is the transfer portal. And I got this question today, so I thought I would answer it while we're going into the fall break of college baseball. Transfer portal has been around for decades. It's not anything new. It has been changed. It has been enhanced to the degree that it helps student athletes. But I want to make a correlation here. And the correlation is, is that for the last 10 years, the travel baseball world, high school baseball world, youth baseball world has really been a very transient kind of uh, way of life, meaning It's not uncommon for athletes and families to go from one travel baseball program to the other. So what does that have to do with the NCAA? Quite simply, the NCAA is becoming more pro-student athlete, meaning allowing student athletes to not feel boxed in, but most importantly, to have options. And those options uh, can range anywhere from having the ability to not only laterally transfer, go up and down, but multiple times having the ability to transfer, as well as on another topic, image and likeness, which we will get to at another day. So I want to talk about transfer portal and what the current state is. It allows a student athlete up to two concrete times, three if we include the major league draft period, which occurs in August. So we have after the fall, the completion of your fall semester, as well as after the completion of your spring semester. A student athlete can elect to transfer multiple times during multiple time periods on any given calendar year. Now, why is that the case? Well, for years when college coaches would take jobs up, go up, go down, move around, it kind of locked in a lot of student athletes. And a lot of parents and student athletes voiced their concern, and they really didn't approve of it. And so what happened was the NCAA created legislation, largely due in part because college coaches wanted to have some flexibility as well. This isn't just a one-way street. And so now, how has this affected your student-athlete? Well, quite simply, it affects JUCO, NAIA, and all levels of Divisions 1, 2, and 3 at the NCAA level. Let me paint you a couple of scenarios. First, it's the completion of the fall semester. Let's say your son happens to be at a JUCO or a junior college. And let's, for the sake of discussion, your son finds himself in the mix or even as a starter, possibly, for the upcoming 23 season. All of a sudden, fall rosters are trimmed at the NCAA Divisions 1 and 2, sometimes Division 3 levels, but not that often. And what happens is, is those student athletes that are at the Division 1 and 2 level, they want to play. And they want to know they're going to get an opportunity to not only get better, but be exposed potentially to the major league draft. So those student athletes are looking for junior college roster spots. And that puts JUCO coaches in a rough position because one, they want to be the best that they're capable of being. And they also get these student athletes that come in from some very powerful higher level programs. And therefore your current student athlete at a JUCO could be, put on the back burner, asked to redshirt, or be on the bench. Specifically, I want to address how the portal affects current high school student-athletes. And quite simply, the pecking order now with relation to recruiting in college quite simply goes to the transfer student-athlete, the JUCO uh, transfer student-athlete, the postgraduate student-athlete. And if you've heard me talk before, Uh, postgraduate is that extra year of high school that doesn't affect college eligibility and it does play a role in recruiting because typically a student athlete 
coming out of a postgrad year is one year more physically mature as well as academically prepared and mature as a student and then the high school athlete. If we use the round number of 10, with 10 being what most college coaches would bring in, some bring more, some bring less. Uh, now, in years past, it might have been eight high school athletes to two JUCO transfers, and the occasional transfer would, would kind of interfere with that. Now it's quite different. It's anywhere from three to five high school student athletes with a couple of JUCOs, and then there's some flexibility or free roster spots that are held open later in the process, i.e. into the summer of that year of 20, summer of 2023, let's say, for the potential of athletes hitting the transfer portal. So no longer will you see college coaches ramping up or filling up the high school student athlete. So unfortunately, as it consists today, it's not going to change. It's going to be here for quite some time. I don't see the rules having any sort of, um, you know, kind of changes or, or, or restrictions. I think it's going to be set here for the foreseeable future. And unfortunately, it is going to have an effect on the high school student athlete. If you as a family have any questions, feel free to comment below. Send me a direct message. I answer these uh, at least 10 times a month to make sure we get current information into your hands so you can make an informed decision. I encourage you to subscribe, as always, to our channel. We want to grow the channel. More importantly, I would love for you to like and hit that little bell that gives you opportunity to know whenever I put a new video out, you're going to be the first to see it. So thank you for joining me here at the Baseball Lifer channel. You can also follow me uh, over on Twitter at Baseball11. Be on the lookout for the new book, The Shift. It's coming out in December.